Show. We're here weekdays on CBS Radio, YouTube Live, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. The Armchair Quarterback Show, your first choice for Southern Sports Talk. Good morning, Mr. Justin Waller. Good morning. I don't know much, but I know one thing. AFC South defensive coordinators have been put on full notice. Good luck stacking nine in the box this year. Hi, I'm Mac McGee, I don't know much, but I know one thing. The Dodgers are going on going back home with their tails between their legs. It's about damn time, Atlanta. How about those Braves? You're listening to the armchair quarterbacks. We were on the break. <laughs> Coffee house. Back. <laughs> armchair. Community access channel. He's the armchair quarterback. He's full of beer and he's full of snacks. The all American man. Yeah, the yeah, howdy, howdy. Top of the morning to you. Welcome to the armchair quarterback radio show. Mac McGee and Justin Waller sitting alongside with you riding shotgun this morning. Uh, Justin, how the hell are you, sir? Nervous. Uh, great weekend for the Titans, but uh, I I'm really nervous. Uh, past free agent signings have uh, made me a little gun shy with this organization. But uh, now that it's over and done with, there's nothing I can do about it other than hope that uh, one Julio Jones makes me eat a lot of crow. Well, hopefully this is the Marcelo Zuna signing of 2020, not the Marcelo Zuna signing of 2021. So uh, that's that's what that's the hopefulness, man. I'll tell you what, I'm jacked. Uh, I believe that they are the team to beat now in the AFC South. I don't know if that was necessarily the case before this trade. It's like you said uh, in the in the early part of the morning uh, or, or the early part of the show it's going to make it really damn difficult to stack that box to stop Derrick Henry. When you've got two elite receivers out there, nothing wrong with Corey Davis. He's a really good receiver, but Julio Jones, when healthy, when right is arguably he's definitely top five and he's arguably top two or three wide receivers in all the NFL. Well, I'm mean, going to put it this way. He's got 58, 100 yard games in his career. The Titans have 50 over that same span. I mean, one man has single-handedly had eight more, 100 yard games in the entire organization has had over the, his playing career. I mean, that's the kind of impact you're going to put out there. And look, I feel sorry for the number two cornerback that's going to come in here. I don't know which one they're going to get. You know, the number one is going to take Brown or, or Julio. And, you know, you, you suspect they'll be okay, limit a little bit of production. But number two now has a threat to be exposed by either side. So you pick your poison. Uh, you know, which one do you want to dance with? And then, oh, by the way, you got the king back there steamrolling folks. So good luck with eight in the box. Bring nine in and give Julio single coverage, the most he'll ever have seen in his life with Brown on the opposite side. Um, it could be big things. The key here is health. Um, and you just have to hope they've done their due diligence and uh, that somehow, some way they can keep Julio healthy. And uh, I mean, I suggest you just bubble wrap him, keep him in a uh, hyperbaric chamber <laughs> until game day and don't let anything happen to him. I mean, don't breathe on the fella. <laughs> but i mean hey i, I, I i'm very john, optimistic especially don't let john rom breathe on him right um correct but here's the concern here's what goes by everybody's talked offense 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 oh titans are contenders we, we saw tampa bay come in here had a great offense wasn't the best in the league by far but what did they win that championship last year off of? They won it off that defense. That defense got hot and heavy in the right time and in the playoffs. That's my biggest concern. Yeah, I think they'll throw points, and I think they can hang in some of these shootouts now with some of these rosters, uh, these high-power offense that the Titans have scheduled this season. The biggest concern is can the defense stop anyone? Well, to that point, the one thing that I will say about that is, first of all, I felt like that they addressed a lot of needs in the draft. Farley out of Virginia Tech should be a shutdown corner. Monty Rice is, a, is an is an athletic linebacker. Uh, I think that they're kind of they were trying to kind of mirror what the uh, what the Bucks had done in, in past drafts. But when your offense is better, your defense is better because your defense does not have to go out there and shut things down. What I, I get it that the that the uh, Bucks won it in twenty twenty or the 2020 season, they won it this year. But the year before, the Super Bowl was won because the Kansas City Chiefs 
could 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 score from any part of the field at any time. Do I think it's going to be that offense? Probably not. But I do think they're going to be really hard to, to deal with. And when you're having to st- stack the box and you get behind this Tennessee Titan offense, which is what the hope is, is the Titans will go out there and score and score at will. You then make the offense you're facing one-dimensional. So I think instantly just adding Julio Jones – Whatever your defensive ranking would have been this year, I think you can raise it five five spots just because of Julio Jones because you're going to have Julio. You're going to have Aaron – or, sorry, AJ. You're going to have uh, Derrick Henry. And then, of course, I have total faith in Tannehill. I'm assuming, I'm assuming you do. And I'm not writing off Anthony Ferkser. I just don't think he's the deep vertical threat that uh, Johnny not Smith him. was. But I'll tell you this about Ferkser. He doesn't drop balls. I think he was 19 for 19. And he also doesn't disappear. Now, that could be game playing. There could be a lot of reasons. But there were games where Julio uh, – Julio. Johnny Smith just disappeared. True. And so – and I would say that's probably not all his fault. I'm not going to get out here and start trashing a guy because he doesn't play for the Titans anymore because, honestly, they're probably going to use him like a son of a gun, and you're going to see a di- – I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Keep your eye on Johnny Smith come – come a fantasy draft season because that could be a get especially because your boy cam newton's hands busted up i think i think he's getting wally pitched before we ever hit the uh before we i mean he's just so ball. versatile i mean is he, a, he is he going to be tight ends is he going to be a slot receiver i mean where are they going to put him hey you can put him all across that offensive line any position i mean you know. obviously about interior lineman but anywhere out there <laughs> offensive. He, he's not scared to run three uh tight ends out there you know so you know, if there was a way to get him to snap the ball and make him eligible, I wouldn't think that Bill Belichick wouldn't release him on a damn post route from the center position. But uh, to my knowledge, there's not a rule that makes that happen. Real quick, I want to bring this uh, up to you real quick. Uh, look at the stats. Now, this doesn't have 2020 in front of us because this this was the only one I could pull up. And honestly, 2020 was injury riddled, so, so we won't worry about that. But look at the stats from Julio Jones from his career. Uh, going back to his rookie season t- in 2011, you've got 959 yards there. There, I believe 13 was an injury. Uh, was an injured season, if, if memory serves me correct. So he had 1200, 1500, 1800, 14, 14, 16, 14, almost. Wow, and that's what you're bringing to the party. I hell, he still had almost 800 yards receiving. He only played nine games last year. So we're going to get 17 games. What would be your guess of, of his yardage this year? I mean, I'm still going to say it's going to be similar. I think in that 14, 6, 1500. I'm no, picking- I think it'll be in the 14, 1500 range. Um, you, you got to remember Brown's going to cannibalize some of them numbers. Now, granted, I know he had some of it cannibalized in Atlanta, but he was the number one. I don't know that he he's not the number one here. Um I have to say, you, AJ's your number one. I mean, it's like you got a one A and a one B, and I guess depending on how Julio's you look at number it, one, because really, well, well, Julio's been a number one. He's proven he can beat the coverage. AJ's never had that. What this does is it just makes AJ a hell of a number two. I mean, I, I don't even know if you. It's like you just said. I don't know if you can even put a number two. I think AJ's your one A. Now yeah. with the. Do you know the the uh I, I do not have this. I'm about to ask you a question. I don't know the answer to you. I won't do that. Um, I'm curious on Julio's contract, how much longer he has on his because by the time Julio's contract uh ends, I would think AJ Brown's the number one, right? But for 20, it is through the oh, okay, it's just this season next season in the year after so yeah there's three left and i think there's 21 cap hit that the falcons get to send over to the titans this year and i think it's like 19 and 19 after that is that correct something something along those lines okay so what i'm looking at if this is if if this is accurate i don't i don't even know what i'm on but anyways um i don't i don't like saying certain websites out because you don't know if you're leading someone to porn if you like leave a letter out or something well while you pull that i'll, I'll, I'll i've I'll. got i've got julio okay so it says cap hit 15 three dead cap is 17 three okay and then on 2022 it says 11 and two but that's because the 
the uh, deadline hasn't uh, crossed yet. And then in 2023, it's only 11. So he actually goes down significant. Is he going to go out here and, and raise $300 worth of hell and want to have a, a new contract by next year? I mean, he just got one in Atlanta and then wasn't happy about it. Wanted another one. So who knows? That um, That's my only concern about this trade. Justin, to be honest well, with you, is it, what's he going to be like? Is, is he going to be a distraction? Is he going to be all in? I think, I think he will be, everyone's always happy when, when they first get traded, but it is, we have him for three years. Will he stay that team focused? Cause I, one thing that I will say about the Titans, they have a culture that you want to call it the Patriot way, whatever the hell you want to call it, but they have a culture where they're all in, they're all in to win. They're behind Vrabel, yada, yada, yada. I just hope Julio, and I don't have a reason to think he's not. I think he just wanted to a change of scenery, but. I just hope he's healthy. I hope he stays healthy. We saw seven games him miss last year with a hamstring, so I hope he's nursed that, doing whatever he's got to do to get healthy this offseason. That's my biggest take. I'm still, I'm just still pissed about uh, the draft the past two seasons, and I think that's what is kind of my frustration with this trade is I know have you not flopped on Isaiah Wilson, you're not taking Munez number in the second round this year, and you're going out and getting yourself a big, big time wide receiver with that second round pick and you're not in this situation. So it, just the frustrations there, uh, I'm still just disgruntled about the old Panda debacle. And uh, I hope this one hits. Um, I hope this is a, a lot better than what we saw with the last two free agent signings after uh, Robinson, you know, you, you got the clowny debacle and then uh, uh, was it Fowler, the uh, Atlanta linebacker that we paid $9 million to play one game, I think. Yeah. Now, now, would you put any of that up to the fact of the COVID and not being able to go in and uh, interview and prod and poke, or do you think it was just, I mean, look, most people would have said when we signed Clowney, it was an answer. And for whatever reason, I don't know why Clowney didn't fit, but for whatever reason, it, it, it was an absolute disaster. Yeah. But he leaves and goes, where's he at? Cleveland now, I believe. Uh, so. When well, he goes out and has a pro bowl year this year, we're going to be, really be wondering what the hell happened in, in uh, Nashville in, in 2020. But I just see the numbers speak for itself. You know, as well as I do, you've been playing fantasy football. I don't know how long you've been playing, but you've been playing as long as we've been doing the show. And you know, Julio Jones is a top fantasy football wide receiver every My single year. So, you know, the, the numbers are going to be there. The only knock I could put on Julio from a fantasy perspective is touchdowns touchdowns i mean that, that's the only night but you know if you've got henry and you've got aj does he need touchdowns no he just needs the 1500 well, yards to get him to the red zone well and plus is is that is that ever the receiver's fault or is that the design of the play right like right. if you're if you're 27 yards away from the end zone and he gets knocked out of the two well who the hell designed the 25 yard route right, right. You know what I mean? So I, I, I never put that no, on. I mean, that, that, the only that, people I ever put that on only position. I don't mean to cut you off is the goal line back. If he can't get in the end zone, that's an issue. Right. But yeah. I mean, that's my only fantasy complaint and that's strictly a fantasy complaint. If I'm real world, the only complaint, the 32 doesn't scare me. The age isn't there. It's just the health or are we going to be healthy? Are we going to have nagging injuries? Cause that's what you're going to need. Is he going to be on the field top 100% in these big games when you have these matchups roll in here and the, these must win divisional games? Because um, let's face it, it's it's win the division or bust. I think you you can have wild card seems to be a far fetch and you need to have that mentality going into this season that it's division or bust. That's your only way in. I'm sure they yeah. probably approach it like that every year, but there's been years in the past where wildcard like, Hey man, we're going to have the top two out of this division. We just got to stay at the top two in the South and you, you'll be in. All right. Well, let's go ahead and try to switch gears here. Cause we don't have much time and uh, man, a lot of crap went on over the weekend. <laughs> we can go on for seven hours about this. Um, yeah. First of all, real quick. I just want to mention, we're not gonna have time to talk about it. Cause we got so, so much stuff. The hat, Florida State's women somehow are still alive. I don't know how the hell they're doing it. They're on fumes at this point. Thank God they didn't have to play another doubleheader last night. They play Alabama tonight to for the right to the College World Series. And then also, it's so it's a doubleheader tonight, by the way. Uh, James, James Madison University, the Cinderella darlings, 
they're going up against Oklahoma with that same thing. So had there had Florida state lost last night in that elimination game, they would have gotten it all done last night, but because FSU won, they didn't want another debacle of these girls playing till two in the morning. So they went ahead and, and sent it. Do you want to hear something crazy? And I'm sure I, I know you haven't been locked into the women's college world series, but imagine this. So you're going, you're in the losers bracket. You, you know, you're going to get a, a bad, you know, draw, uh, a, a difficult road, but anyways, Saturday, their game is scheduled to play at two 30. It started about that time. Then there was a rain delay. Long story short, the game ended around six, seven o'clock in the evening. There was another game being played. So Florida State had to wait for that game. That game got pushed back a little bit because of rain. Long story short, they first pitch on a second part of a doubleheader was 12 or sorry, 1150 PM local time, 1250 AM Eastern time. NCAA rules states that you can't start a game past 11 PM. So already they've broken the NCAA rule for even allowing this, right? Okay. You're going to play whatever. I get it. You're going to play the next day at three 30 Eastern, which they, they're never accurate with that. There's it always takes longer, but anyway, so Florida state started playing around uh, uh, later because there was another rain delay. But the point being, this is how stupid the NCAA is Justin. Even though they left the field at like 2.30 Eastern, no, I'm sorry, 3.30 a.m. Eastern, around 2.30 local time, got back to the hotel around 3 or 4, probably didn't get sick to around 5, right? They still had these girls who weren't going to play till tomorrow night have to get up at 9 a.m. to take COVID testing. Now, why the hell do you have to get up that early? They couldn't have figured out some way. Now, I don't know where they take the test if it's in the hotel or whatever, but you couldn't have figured out some way to let, let them sleep in a little bit, then go take the test. The pitcher who pitched last night in relief, she started late to uh, Saturday night. She, she said that she didn't get to sleep till some, sometime after five o'clock in the morning had to be up at freaking nine. So she could catch the bus and get over to do the COVID testing at nine 40 Eastern. I mean, uh, local time. How dumb is that? So we're worried about their health, but we're not worried about, about their, their health because everybody knows if you don't get, get, get sleep, the first thing that crashes is your immune system. I don't know about you, but anytime I go two or three days without getting a lot of sleep, I end up, you know, getting the sniffles or something, a fever or something. Yeah. I mean, I, there's a lot of other, we've seen a lot of silliness in the COVID. Um, it's actually a good transition. I didn't watch any of that, but in, but into the golf, I know you wanted to bring that oh, up before oh, we got yeah. here, but yeah. what in the heck were they thinking there? I mean, my man's got a six stroke lead. He's done playing on Saturday. Can he not like tee off an hour later than everybody else on Sunday and okay. by himself? And it gives you an hour to evacuate. Uh, like when your last pairing goes off, the fans and spectators must go with him. That way he is the only one on the course. Nobody following him behind. Like, well, why couldn't he play by himself if he's asymptomatic? And, and something else that's strange about that. So evidently he had started taking his uh, COVID test uh, the previous Tuesday. So he, he'll be only taking the one jab. He's got another one coming. If you are done with your COVID, then I guess you don't have to take the uh, jabs at all. So we'll say one thing for Rom dumb part on him to not go ahead and get it done because that's money, dude. That's, I mean, not, he doesn't know if he's going to be winning a tournament, but I'm talking about you, you get taken out your your sponsors so that was dumb on his part but here's my question when you take that jab it puts the coronavirus in you that's how it builds up your immune system right could that be why he failed it and why he's why he was asymptomatic i'm like things if you've already started the jab there's i think there's needs to be some kind of an, an intelligent response like you said at least let the guy just tee off an hour for everyone and let him go and see how well he can do it i yeah, yeah. Still making rules about things that we still don't fully understand and know a hundred percent. I just feel bad for the guy. I do too. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for his sponsors. I feel bad for anybody that bet him 10 to one odds before the tournament took off. Oh, you, you want to talk about a bad beat. Oh, did you see uh FanDuel? I don't know about DraftKings, but FanDuel honored the bet and said anyone that bet on on him won their money. Now that might have been because not many people voted. I mean, uh, did it and, and it was a good uh you know PR stunt. Right. Right. But I did think that was cool. Cause can you imagine if you put a, 
like for some reason you got it some really good information like dude he's gonna win this tournament because of this 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 you got these analytics and you throw a grand in or whatever you throw in and it's and it might be like life altering money and then all of a sudden that out you're like i mean you start thinking about walking into traffic and then with my luck, I would have, and then I would get, I, I would get the update while I'm in the hospital in traction. Hey, by the way, FanDuel's going to honor that. Son of a. <laughs> Bad beat, man. That would be horrible. Uh, yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I wish. Uh, I do promise. Would have used their head a little bit and we could have seen that play out. I do promise to do a YouTube live if I ever do that though. <laughs> and I mean, I guess my thing is, is okay. This was a memorial. I'm not d downgrading the memorial, but. What if that would have been for a green jacket? What if uh, that would have been for the players' championship? I mean, what if that would have been for another large tournament uh, major? That's why all those guys need to take away from the moral. It's a very well respected tournament. It, it is. It's Jack Nicholas's tournament. Great tournament. But I mean, what if that was for a jacket, brother? Oh my God. <laughs> I can't wait to hear Tony's reaction on, on uh, Friday with Gators and golf. Cause I'm sure he's just, I get Tony did not have a good weekend, by the way, his Gators got swept out of the freaking NCAA baseball playoffs. Just like his, uh, lady Gators got swept out of the super regional, the, the, the week before So he's watching. I mean, honestly, someone hide the belt and the shoelaces from him. Cause he's probably thinking about walking in traffic right now. And I felt bad for as much as I don't like the Gators. I felt bad for him. He went down to the game on Friday, sat through a rain delay. They lost. Now, I don't know if they, I believe, yes, they did. Cause I saw a Facebook post him and his dad went down on Saturday and his post right before the game said, uh, win or, or, or fire up the grill. Cause the old saying in, 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 in the baseball double eliminations is if you lose the first two, it's called two and barbecue. It's really for the, the college world series. Cause it means that you're stuck there for the rest of the week as a plane. Uh, you, you know, uh, let's say you get to the college world series this year, you're Tennessee and you lose the first two, you have to sit there the rest of the week. Cause your plane reservation. So it's two and barbecue means two. And then you just sit around and chill for the rest and, and just watch it. But yeah, that was a terrible weekend for a golf gator fan man <laughs> reminds me of just being a braves fan how about them coming out and winning yeah two out of three i'll take that every day um every dodgers week, every series yeah th th this wasn't the pirates that we squeezed by this is the dodgers and i know they aren't playing well but we took i think their three best pitchers ish because walker bueller i mean their pitching staff is stupid to begin with i'll be outlawed but we we went Urias, Kershaw, and Trevor Bauer. I love beating Trevor Bauer. Ever since he did the chop thing going into the dugout with Cincinnati, they showed that on during the game yesterday. I'm like, you don't bring up the fact though that, or I guess it was Saturday night's game when they were interviewing, but you don't bring up the fact that he lost the damn game that he did the chop in. Yeah, it was a cool. good game, but he did lose it. Oh, freaking sticky icky is going to be in trouble too because they're going to start cracking down on on the uh on all that nonsense that all the pitchers are putting on the ball and i, I think he's going to be highly highly affected by it one guy that's not going to be affected by is, is uh degrom that dude that dude is just stupid i mean he went back out there again and pitched another gym what was that saturday against uh san diego i think it was i mean he just that guy's the only one on the planet that can have a 0.68 ERA going into this week, pitched twice in the in the ERA dropped. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, uh, we got to run out of here, man. We, we never ha have enough time here. I think we need to start start doing sorry dudes about five minutes before, and then whatever we don't get to, we'll we'll, we'll just get to it. Then what, what's your uh, walk off for the day, sir? Uh, it's just going to be for Cubs fans. Sorry, dude. Uh, Rizzo and Contreras having beef and, you know, sounds like there's some internal fighting and, uh, all I can say is, uh, trickles down from leadership. <sighs> Told you this for us. <laughs> <being a debacle. laughs> I wonder if Joey's watching. I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he'll have some, uh, they, he went to St. Louis country this week to watch Reds Cardinals cause he had a buddy there or something. So I'm interested to hear that on Thursday. Uh, I've never been to, I, I want to go to a Cardinals game in St. Louis and I've never been one. I've only been to the, to their village, but there wasn't a big ball game going on. So it's not the same. Re really got to make that happen before we die. You and I need to go see a, uh, 
Cardinals Braves game in, in Cardinal country. Sounds fun. I wouldn't mind going up there just completely neutral. Uh, but if I do that, it's got to be Cubs Cardinal. And that's the only way I'm going. I just want to sit back and enjoy the show. The, I think the biggest issue we'd have is getting so slobber knocked. We'd forget to go to the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just get one of them seats. Out there in a bar, the we're sitting in a bar. So we're going to do that. Man, the Cardinals has a good team. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Well, if you hit it just right, you can park on the interstate behind home plate and we can just tailgate on the shoulder of the interstate and we can look right through and watch the game. I mean, there you go, buddy. Who needs tickets? <laughs> All right, brother. We'll, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, football Friday this week. We're going to uh, start up the predictions. It'll be the first one you'll do. Message me a college football team uh, today that you want to do this coming Friday. I haven't set my schedule at all. I've been slacking on that. And well, fear not. I won't pick the Campbell Campbells, even though they are highly well sought after team that uh, we should be breaking down. But I will save that for a later date and day. Mr. Mike Manor's got a great program going there. All right, brother. Uh, Doug's on the way. We're going to be talking San Diego Chargers. Or damn it, I, this is like five years they've been there. The Los Angeles Chargers. We'll be back in a flash here on the Armchair Quarterbacks. Max, a woman in my section wants to know if we do anything gluten-free. What do I tell her? Tell her she's not allergic to gluten. She's just masking an eating disorder. At Jewelers Mutual, we're a little obsessed with jewelry. Obsessed like auctioneers with talking fast. 50, we're going to Pop stars with auto-tune. Yeah, 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 yeah. And dentists with asking questions. So how did he propose? After they put their Ooh, hands in your mouth. Black. Great. Yes, we've made jewelry our obsession for over 100 years. We love it so much, we named our kids Ruby, Amber, and Opal. Venti soy latte for Opal? At Jewelers Mutual, we insure jewelry and only jewelry. Which is why people who are also obsessed with jewelry trust us with theirs. Let's face it, where you're betting is just as important as who you're betting on. That's why I go to mybookie.ag. It's fast, it's easy, and they pay you when you win. Look, I wouldn't be telling you to bet mybookie.ag if they weren't the best. Do the smart thing. If you're going to bet this football season, bet with mybookie.ag. That's mybookie.ag. They're telling me. Why are they telling me? Well, what do we do? This just got way too complicated. I've got it. Here's what's going down. Corey? You talk to your team, you guys are going to decline that holding call. Done. Y'all wait for this. Hold on. Okay, Sean, once we break this huddle, you're going to get out there, do some crazy celebration. I'm talking some humpies. Whatever you've got to do, you do it. Okay, I got you. I'm going to call unsportsmanlike conduct on the celebration, giving the wife better field position after the kickoff. Coach, I need to talk to your team about letting them run that kickoff back. Why would I do that? Think about it. Defense, special teams, it's all one. You let them run that kickback, both your defenses get six points. Nice. Okay, everyone good here? Yeah. yeah. Nope. Once again, my kicker is getting no love. Oh, shut up, Bill. Your team is in first place. Plus, you're about to get extra points for the PAT. Yeah, don't be greedy, Bill. Stop being greedy, Bill. Bill. Fine. Bill. Yeah, Bill. I said fine. Bill. Bill. Yeah, Bill. You, Bill. All right. Let's do this. Get out there. Wait a minute. Uh, Trayson comes in with a very delayed celebration here. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a... Yeah, there it is. Another... Armchair. <laughs> Do you want to lose 18 pounds fast and improve your health? Now you can lose up to 18 pounds in your first two months with Nutrisystem. Get delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners, even snacks and shakes delivered safely to your door. All delivered for free. It's easy to follow, and you'll see results in your first week. Just text BURN to 323232. You'll get your favorite foods made healthier and perfectly balanced to put your body in fat burning mode. Text BURN to 323232 right now and get 50% off a month of meals and shakes. That's right, 50% off a month of meals and 50% off a month of shakes with probiotics to help support your immune system. Just text BURN to 323232 right now. There's even a money-back guarantee. Millions of people have lost weight with Nutrisystem, and you can too. Lose up to 18 pounds in your first two months. Just text BURN to 323232. That's B-U-R-N to 323232. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting rules for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. Georgie, would you like some jello? Why'd you put the bananas in there? <laughs> So let him have bananas on the side! All right, please! Please! I cannot have this constant bickering! Stress is very damaging to the epidermis! Your eyes hot water, your head satellite, okay, look like someone's gone.
Doug, how the hell are you this morning, sir? Hold on, Doug. Doug, you're uh, muted. I got it. I got it. I mute you when I when we go to break. If I can get to it, it's kind of hard to explain how the system works. Because I never know if you're going to have that smoker's cough in our ear when we're, when we're at break. So I try to mute you. <laughs> I meant to hit the uh, ask to unmute button, but I always forget that. Uh, how are you, sir? Doing well, thanks. Dude, Looking like you're having a good morning. So dude, far. I'm having a great morning. I mean... <laughs> As they, I don't ever understand the quote, but as they always say, if I'd be, if I was doing it better, I'd be twins. Um, Justin says it regularly. I still don't understand it. I know it's a saying. I don't understand the saying. Like, how the hell would that be better? I, I wouldn't want a second one of me. That would creep me the hell out if I came around the corner and saw myself. Like, ah! uh, that wouldn't be good optic for the show either. Everyone would be freaking like, God, there's two of these fat bastards out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh man I, i've actually had a pretty decent weekend we we spent the 75th uh birthday with my father-in-law I had a good time there incredible food uh my wife and her brother put together a uh a, a, su a seafood boil which you know you can't beat that and then the braves took two out of three from the dodgers you gotta love that yeah and Julio Jones comes to the Tennessee Titans. You got to look at that. And the Women's College World Series, the Seminoles are still alive. I thought they were done, down and out. This, the first game of the doubleheader on Saturday, I was at that cookout, and <laughs> I can't tell you how I can be, have less in common with people. They don't watch TV much. Okay, so I'm at this okay. thing and and I, I can't see the game. So I'm constant. I'm checking Twitter like religiously. I'm seeing the highlights off of Twitter, but that's all I can get because my phone's kind of jacked up. And the only way I can charge it nowadays is on one of those on those flat chargers where you just kind of lay it on, on the charging base. Okay, yeah. I, I can't plug it in. So I, nor normally back in the day, I would always have a uh, uh portable charger with me right but you can't carry that clunky thing around how the hell is that gonna work so and i didn't want to be like that guy sitting in the freaking you know corner with a charger watching the game so i was trying to be a part of the sh of the of the uh, festivities so i'm just mm -hmm. checking twitter constantly I, I, I can't see the game essentially mm -hmm. they had one tv going the damn thing was on pandora <laughs> oh, man. I was joking with my wife later. I say, you got one TV going. Florida State's one of Florida State's uh best and brightest uh sports writers that has been doing uh Florida State sports writing for I don't know how long she's been doing it, Doug. I'd say at least 40 years, if not more. She uh writes out of St. Augustine. I don't remember which publication she's with now. So I think it's changed over the years, but anyways, Miss Carrie Dunning was there. So she is like in hell too. Cause she's like, Oh, the game's going on. I want to see what the girls are doing. So I'm having to update her and, uh, uh long story short. Um, we, uh, that's pretty much what I did Saturday night was, was and now when I got home, the game was on so late. The second game, I watched the whole game, uh, stay up till three 30 in the morning. It was ridiculous. They had those girls playing that late. And then last night I watched the game. So I'm going to watch it again tonight. I keep expecting to lose because Alabama is supposed to be one of the best teams in the country and Alabama's they've won at least one championship. I mean, Alabama's always in that damn thing. You know, it's just like everything with the Alabama sports are always winning. So I'm hoping we get a, this team seems like a team of destiny to me, but there's only been one team in the last like 20 years that has lost the first two or lost the first game of the women's college world series and then gone on to win it. Cause it's double elimination and they just stack the cards against you. Right. The, the only team who's done it in like the last 20 something years, I think it's 27 years was the Florida state 2018 team. So I'm hoping they can, um, rewrite history once again but if not it's it's been a hell of a ride it's been fun to watch um the only bad thing was our baseball team got knocked out but hell that thing sucked all year long i don't 
you know, I'm sorry. But I, when they started, I was like, if we get out of the first first round, I'll just be in. I'll be impressed. But they're gonna get dusted somewhere along the way. How was your weekend? I rattled on enough. How's your weekend? Oh no, you're the one with the exciting weekend. I had to work all weekend, so there's <laughs> there's nothing to there's nothing to Oops. say here. Just have to work. So then that means very little got done, and, and you were staring at your fantasy team. Uh, yes, that's what I meant to say. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes, <laughs> that's what well, I did. you, sir. Thank how, you. How did your uh, <laughs> fantasy teams do? Uh, miracles done, miraculous. I mean, I won in two, and uh, a certain Mister McGee scomped my butt in the dynasty league. Okay, I knew I was playing you in one of them. It's so confusing to keep up with this junk now because I, I got the four that I'm in with y'all, and then I said I was all oh, not gonna do anymore, and I'm in four other ones. So I got eight <laughs> stupid leagues. I said I wasn't going. I was only gonna do like two or three. I got eight leagues going on. Two of them are rotisserie, uh, which just yeah. make my head want to scratch and pull it off every day I play that. Um, and then one is a head-to-head uh, category one, and then. Yeah. The rest are all points. Um, our, our, our YouTube league, that one, um, I'm doing good and I'm second. I've actually, so Steven's in first, but that's by luck of the draw. Cause yeah. if you, if you look at it, I've outscored him by 600 points. Mm-hmm. We're in week nine or just finished week nine. So yeah. I play him in a few weeks. I'm hoping I'm within a game with him in a few weeks so I can, beat him and uh but you're in a decent team and i i guess i'm playing you uh this week in that i think this will be a low scoring week by the way because there's like nobody plays today and, i know and there's not-, not a lot of games on thursday so like when you see your projections if you see like 300 is your projection don't freak out because it's that's it's going to be a low scoring week yeah um oh I, I i'm happy though in that dynasty league that uh oh, I I'm glad- you're, you're you're averaging what 550 to 570 in that league every week yeah it, that just that just means the law of average is gonna n- nip me in the bud you know in september when the playoffs actually count um, yeah but what i like about that one is that i've got the one game lead over shock and uh plus a 400 point lead on him so I, in theory um he i would have to lose two and him win two for me to be in second place because yeah. that one, you're you're on the cusp there in that one. You're you're fighting for that last uh, playoff spot. Oh yeah, I'm I'm just keeping my head above water every week. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I I see no posy, no picture. Uh, make moves all the time. Like his team is terrible. It's like two and seven. It's like, <laughs> Talk like about the, drowning. It's like the most aggressive one. He's like waking up at three in the morning picking up players, and I'm like, your team is terrible. <laughs> but I know. I, I never doubt him because we've seen his team just be trash all year long. And then it gets rolling around August. So mm-hmm. I'm glad to have a guy in the league. Who's in the last place by a lot and still fighting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I give him credit for that because he, I mean, he keeps I mean, me up at 3 a.m. All the time. I, I know he's up. Cause my, <laughs> um, my laptop is going off, going off and all the leagues and all the one he participates in. Right doing it so yeah uh, wow someone made a big what what did stanton buy on the waiver budget do you know no i I didn't didn't see it i was looking at everyone's waiver budget and almost everyone's got a hundred i've got like i've spent like nine bucks um he's got 44 so someone came across the wire that he said i am not losing i'm gonna i'm gonna figure that out real quick um dfs you got your dfs rolling for today there really wasn't it just slim pickings this day i I I know i mean we don't have to spend much time on it but i do like to do dfs every day for people that are out there gambling at value for today's games i mean i think you got schnell today and i um he's just at his basic value and uh pick up with merrifield for today's game because i think uh, kansas city is one of the few games and that's about all I really got for today. That I think is that any value or anything worth for the day. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in the fact that uh, they got the new kid coming up from uh, uh, Kansas City today, but he's he's never made a major league debut, so you don't even know if he's worth 
putting in there because that could be an absolute disaster if you i wonder what i wonder how much he is on dfs on season long i'd be a little hesitant but on DraftKings, if, you, if you're looking to win i think a lot of people are going to take this risk though uh because there's only six pitchers starting today right yeah but um coar six thousand dollars i think he's worth the shot i think you take coar and they got Pablo Lopez up there high. Problem is, he's playing Boston. I don't want that offense going up against my pitcher. I think I'm more yeah. likely to take Pavetta and Coar in a in a uh, dyna, uh, sorry uh, DFS. Mm-hmm. And I actually think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take Coar and uh, Pavetta and roll with that because I'd rather have Pavetta versus Miami's offense than Pablo Lopez, who in theory is a better pitcher. But he, dude, the Dude, the Red Sox, they swept the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. First time in 10 years. By the way, uh, Yankees, Red Sox, or what are we calling? Uh, Red Sox, Yankees, and Rays. That's going to be coming to you live on YouTube at 9.35 this morning. We're going to be rolling. I've got a doctor's appointment. It's a long story short. So we're going to hit the road after out of this show, hit the road running. We're going to go live on YouTube with that show. It's normally going to be 10 a.m., but we're doing it early so I, I can get it uh, out there. And then I got to haul ass to the uh, to the doctor. Um, I'm going to take blood tests today. And you know how they starve you from the night yeah. before for 12 hours. So, I'm, so if, I'm, if I'm seeing a little kooky today, um, I've got <laughs> only thing I've been allowed to drink is black coffee and water. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. What up with that? <laughs> and I've drank a lot of black coffee. Oh, man. I know where you'll be after you uh, get done with that blood test. You'll be eating somewhere. I thought you were going to say on the can. Because <laughs> 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 we, we all know what freaking coffee does to you. Uh, I was trying to keep it clean. Even on YouTube, I was trying to keep it clean. I worked in a restaurant years ago and you know, there's certain things people say to you, you never forget. And I don't know why this was as funny as I thought it was. A lot of people, I don't think were so funny, but you worked in restaurants, so you'll dig it. It was a really slow day. I mean, really slow. This, this restaurant, the uh, upper management was running it into the ground. So worse than any kind of slow day you can think of at the place that I worked with you at. Right. And <laughs> It was like a Monday or a Tuesday. So we know it was just slow. We knew we weren't going to get busy. Like, I think we do like $500 in sales on Monday. It was pathetic. And the general manager at the time, that's a, a friend of the show. I hope to see him when, when I go up to Nashville, he looked at me and he goes, Mickey, I'm so bored. I'm thinking about drinking some coffee. And I said, you don't drink coffee. He goes, yeah, I know, but I want to have something to do. So I think I'm going to drink some coffee. So I have to poop. So I have something to do. <laughs> just the straight way he said because the guy is very uh bob newhart would be the closest thing that comes to mind with this guy's personality you know he, he would just say straight lay stuff to you but he had that glimmer in his eye like he knew it was funny but, but his face never reacted to it you know <laughs> if i'm busting balls i'm laughing all over the place and everything i mean he, he was just kind of give you that look like you know are you catching the joke and i, I mean I, I died laughing sure enough he he uh i saw him Head towards the restroom about 30 minutes later after he chugs some coffee. <laughs> he comes oh. out. He comes out and goes, Now what? We still got like eight hours le- left in the shift. <laughs> <laughs> Arrow, oh. be fine. Let's go to the Chargers, baby. Chargers oh. saying, uh, God, Lord, I'll be saying that till the day I die. The LA Chargers, I won't call them the the uh LA Chargers from the jump until they move to the next place. Um it's just, I don't know, man, when, when a team is that long ever since you were a kid has been named something like that. The Raiders, I can catch myself because the Raiders have moved like 20 times in my lifetime. Nah. Chargers, I don't know, man. Um, By the way, for folks that are we're like, well, what have the Chargers been up to, right? Um. Looking at the at the Chargers for this year, going into it, they went out in the first round. They grabbed Slater. They grabbed Asante Samuel Jr. 
they you know grabbed Palmer, the wide receiver out of Tennessee, and they grabbed Trey uh, McKitty, which is an interesting one, tight end. Those first four picks could be really good. Now, I, 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 the jury's out on Palmer to me, but he was always really athletic. I just felt like he never had a quarterback when, when he was in college. So he could be another situation like Al, Alvin Kamara didn't start for the Vols, but he goes to the NFL. He's one of the best running backs to ever do it. Um, yeah. That team's going to be good. And then, of course, you're going to get Derwin James back. So that's – and then, of course, the maturation of Justin Herbert. A lot of people have been ranking him about eighth in the NFL altogether. Um. Where where would you put now you're a Raiders fan? Where would you put Justin Herbert at? Is he top 10 to you in the NFL going into 2021? No, I think he's top 15, but he's not top 10 yet. He has to prove that this year. He plays 12 assistant, then I, I make him a top 10 quarterback. But he's got a little bit to prove still. I mean, one season doesn't make your career. So, we don't, I mean, he comes out of the great gate, but you've got that, you know, that second year slump. Yeah, we don't have time to do it today because we're going to run short, but uh, it'd be fun to do a, uh, a quarterback ranking going into this season. So we might have to do that in the very near future. Uh, if you can help me remember this, because I've got like 45 pounds of coffee pumping through my veins right now. Uh, okay, let's go to the Chargers and let's, get, let's see. Win by win. Here we go. We got to do this fast. So right. uh, I rattled on about, I don't know. I don't know. I blacked out. Was I talking about uh, softball or something? Okay, here we go. Uh, softball and coffee. Regular season. So, yeah, softball and coffee. It's not a bad name for a podcast if I knew more about softball or or coffee if I knew more. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> uh, Chargers. Chargers. At, they start off at Washington at home against Dallas at the Chiefs, and then home against the Raiders. Where are they set after the first four? All right, after the after the first one, they are they are. Uh, let me see. They lose to Washington. They beat the Cowboys. They lose to the Chiefs, and they lose to the Raiders. So they're one in four after the first five. You named off four games and you got it in one and four. One and three, sorry. The one and three after week four. Do you need some coffee? Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I got a two and two. I figured they'll beat the Cowboys. The Raiders game on ESPN is going to be a difficult one. And at the Chiefs, a difficult one. But I figured they'll split in their division somehow, some way or the other. So I've got them two and two. I do think at, at Washington is going to be a tough one. Washington's going to be one, one of my darling teams this year. Okay, yeah. so after that, you've got Browns at Ravens, Patriots at Eagles. All right. Uh, they beat the Eagles, they beat the Patriots, they lose to the Ravens, and they beat the Browns. So I've got them going. Man, we really have to speed this up. I've got them going. Um, I'll see another two and two. Got them at four and four at the halfway point. Vikings, Steelers, Broncos, and Bengals. Uh, Vikings. They beat the Vikings. They lose to the Steelers. They beat the Broncos. And they beat the Bengals. I've got them beating Vikings. I think they'll beat the Steelers. And they'll... Oh, that's going to be a tough one. It's a one o'clock game. Okay. Once again, I got him going. I say I got him six and six at that point. So the last five yep. giants, chiefs, Texans, Broncos, Raiders, where do they finish up at? All right. And they finish by, let me see where the hell am I? All right. Ah, uh, they beat the, they beat the giants. They lose to the chiefs. They beat the Texans. They beat the Raiders. And that's how they finish the season. So what does that make your tally? That uh, makes my tally makes them 10 and nine. That's going to be difficult to do. Oh, 10, nine, 10, nine, nine, eight. Sorry. Nine, eight. Okay. Let's see. That's going to be really hard to do. If you only play 17. Yeah, I know. I know. 
I've I've got them going ten and seven. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt on one of those games. I look, I, I think I just think that the Texans are gonna be terrible. I think Deshaun Watson is gonna hold out or something. It's just gonna be a mess. I think they'll beat the Giants and then one of those games down the stretch, Chiefs, Broncos, Raiders, they're gonna get a W. I don't know if that'll be good enough to, to make the playoffs, but I definitely think that they're gonna be in the conversation for sure. All right, let's go ahead and uh Get into turn back time, do our walk offs, and get the heck on out because we got to start that other one here in a few minutes. Here we go. Uh, if I can ever find these these buttons, I don't really have. I don't really have just one device for the three or four buttons I use every day. But no, I've got seventy thousand buttons over here. All right, here we go. All right. I just found this interesting because it's a first in baseball. And as long as they play that game in 1892, in this state, Jack Doyle becomes the first player to collect a pinch hit when he singles coming off the bench for Cleveland hurler, George Davies. Remember prior to that time period, there wasn't much of a bench. And if, if there was a bench, it was realistically used for injury purposes. Their best players played every day, and that's just the way it was. Also on this date, 1906, these are two of the best to ever do it. Christy Mathewson and Joe McGinty gave, give up 11 first inning runs, allowing the Cubs to rout the Giants 19 to nothing. Now, what is significant about this is not only is Christian Matthewson one of the greatest of all time, they called him the Christian gentleman. Uh, he famously uh, uh, passed away after getting mustard gas in World War I. By the way, I'm going to hit on that subject in a second. But Joe McGinty, for people who don't know who he was, he was, he was an, an original iron horse. This guy routinely, Doug, for the New York baseball giants, pitch double headers yep and now we're pulling guys after pitch counts i and and i can just remember my grandfather this for my, my grandfather's rolling over in his grave but i can remember him going old joe mcginty rolling over in his grave pulling a guy after the sixth inning what the hell is this <laughs> yep all right birthdays it's your birthday today Happy birthday. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to Terrence Mathis. Remember him? Yes. What surprised me about this? I feel like he was just playing in the league. He's 53 years old today. Yeah. I'm sorry, 51, 51 years old. But still, I, I still feel like he was just there. Remember Terrell Buckley? Oh, yes. Florida State Seminole, Miami Dolphin, most famous mm -hmm. for uh, a famous punt return in, against the Syracuse Orangemen where he fake attempted a, a punt. Uh, he put a fake on on a fair catch on a punt versus Syracuse. Yes. He, he, he catches the ball like this, starts walking over to the ref like he had called fair catch, which he had not. Syracuse players stop. He took off like a bat out of hell of the end zone. It's still one of my favorite players of all time. And he is also the guy that on the very first play of the game in Michigan, Michigan, uh, Florida State, I want to say that was 1990-ish, might have been 91. It was it was a top five matchup in, in the big house. He picked sixth Elvis Gerbach. This is this is the year that Desmond Howard won the Heisman. So whatever year that was, and he was already known for doing this number. Okay, uh, Desmond Howard was known for doing the Heisman pose in the end zone. First play of the game, Elvis Gerbach throws a pick six to Terrell Buckley. He he was guarding uh, Howard. He picks it off and does the Heisman pose in the Michigan Stadium. They were not happy with that. What is your walk off for the day, sir? Uh, walk up, we didn't get a chance to talk to him too much, but Atlanta fans and critics, the Falcons had to trade Julio Jones. Everybody's talking about it. They had to do it. It was a business decision. They are so bad with their salary cap, it had to happen. 
Well, plus that, they're they're okay. They they got as much as they could get out of them. Most most folks just don't want to give up that much uh, for a draft capital has become like the new the the new Bitcoin currency in the NFL. True, but they're looking at him. He's getting long in the tooth. But also remember they they added Kyle Pitts. They're the the cupboard's not bare at receiver. They added Kyle Pitts. He's probably going to be the best receiver in this year's draft. To be honest with you, I know he's yeah. a tight end, but he's he, he's a phenomenal athlete. And they still have Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage. I, they're going to be fine. My walk off yeah. is I didn't want to forget about this. It uh, yesterday was the seventy seventh anniversary of D Day, and we just always like to uh, show our appreciation, give a nod, and uh, you know all the, all all the soldiers that died on that day, all the soldiers that survived. Regardless, they hit that beach knowing that there was a good chance they weren't coming home. And unfortunately we didn't have the show on, on D day, but normally we uh, do something special for, but because we didn't have a show yesterday, well, <laughs> one day a week, I don't have a show right now, um, but uh, tip of the cap. And uh, hopefully we never have to go through that again. But if these Dumbasses don't try to keep making us a socialist society. You never know. All right, brother. We'll see you next week. It's, all right. always, it's always good catching up with you. We never have enough time. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. If anyone wants to watch Red Sox, Rays, and Bray. No, sorry. Red Sox, Yankees, and Rays. We'll be starting here in just a couple of minutes with Timus Wooten. Do, 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 do. Goodbye, sweetheart. When it's time to go, do, 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 do. we're back tomorrow with another show. Well, unless we're fired, we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Goodbye. Guys and gals, it's time to go. We'll see you on the next show. Same back time, same back channel. Thanks for listening to the Armchair Quarterbacks on these CBS Sports affiliates and catching the show on YouTube Live. We're here weekdays. Find Armchair Quarterbacks on YouTube Live today. Please subscribe and share and take us everywhere you go. The Armchair Quarterbacks, your first choice for Southern Sports Talk, live from the First Coast. Gonna get another-